are you good at handling adversity when you're out doing food delivery? Today, in my case, I had some road construction that really messed up my plans. Stick around and I'll show you how I fixed it. How do you handle adversity? Do you do it constructively or do you get upset? What, what do you do? My name is Russ and welcome to my channel. On my channel, I give you tips on how to improve your earnings and ratings for food delivery companies. This morning, I was very frustrated because it's very slow out and I took an Instacart order. The delivery was fine. You know, I was in and out of the store really quick, but once I got to the drop off, I knew it was going to get really painful because they were doing road construction and they were directing traffic away and I knew I needed to go to the right and I couldn't get there. It was very, very frustrating. But guess what? In this time of adversity, I knew that I could fix it by walking to the customer. Yes, walking. Can you imagine that? Getting out of the vehicle and walking? Well, it would have been brutal if I would have had to carry five two-liter drinks and a case of cans and then a couple other items. But in this case, if you look back in my previous videos, I review the folding cart and that thing is great. I have it in my trunk and it saved the day. So I gathered up all those items, I put it in the cart, and then I messaged the customer, as you can see here, that I'm gonna start walking towards him. And yes, I was doing that for a reason so that he would know I wasn't just playing around and taking my time getting there. And maybe, you know, he would take some pity on me and increase my tip. So I messaged him and I want to mention too, I also did it for Instacart's benefit so they would understand what was going on if they cared to by looking in the chat. So as I'm walking, sauntering along, you can see all the construction going on and it was very peaceful. It wasn't extremely hot out, but it was very warm. Tell you what, I'm really glad I have this wagon right now. And so I enjoyed that nice stroll around the block. I found the apartment complex and I wheeled the cart up the curb. So glad I have this wagon. Put on the old uh, tip making mask. And yes, it was a second floor delivery. So then I carried the items up there. When I met the customer, I asked him, you know, oh, hey, what's going on with the construction? And, and he said it just started. And so I wished him a good weekend and handed off everything to him. So hopefully by having good customer service and not being upset that I had to walk all that way, hopefully he won't notice the difference. And if he does realize it, then maybe he'll increase my tip because of having to uh, deviate from what's normal. Another example, later this morning at Costco, I accepted a batch because it was really slow and actually it's slow now. Here's a, uh, oh, okay, I'm going to take this. This is a Grubhub 806 for 1.2 miles from Jack in the Box. So I'll come back to this video in a little bit. I'm going to go knock out this delivery. And just like that, I'm back. I dropped off that order and now I'm back in the same spot hoping to get an Instacart order for Costco. But anyway, I digress. Earlier today, I was in Costco and I got a double batch and it was like 30, actually, uh, I'll just look right now. It was uh, 36.84 and it was two orders. And in the attached picture, can you see those two massive carts? Yeah, it was hard to tell from the items, but once I accepted the order, you know, that's just how it is, right? So the one gentleman had five cases of water and then a couple other items. And then the other customer, it ended up being a dental office, a business place that I dropped it off to. That was that massive cart you can see there. And that was quite a few items. My trunk was full and my car was weighed down. That second order I put inside here and the car was full. So I drove very carefully and you know what? we earn the money that we make, right? So it's just how it is. Sometimes some orders are very easy. You just get a couple items at a smooth delivery or you just do a restaurant delivery and it's very smooth. 
Sometimes the orders are bigger. The more adversity would be the gas prices. As long as it's not over $6 here in Southern California, I just consider the gas free. <laughs> just kidding, not really, but it doesn't bother me as much once we went over $6. You know, it's just like $80 to fill up this car. And several years ago when I was doing rideshare and it'd be empty, it would only cost me like $45 to fill it up. All right, here's an Uber Eats request, and uh, that'll be a big no. 623 for six miles, 23 minutes. You know, it is slow, it's not too bad, but uh, I think I'll pass. Anyway, so with gas prices, I want to be very careful in the orders that I take, but you know, as I've shared in previous videos, when it's slow, I do take orders that I otherwise wouldn't. So what kind of adversity do you face when you're out there doing food delivery for the variety of gig economy companies? And that could be DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, you name it, Instacart, Amazon Flex. Those are the ones that I happen to be on, except for DoorDash. Please do share in the comments, what kind of adversity have you faced while doing food delivery, shopping, etc. And how did you handle it? I hope well. Now, I will admit, you know, I don't, I, uh, in the interior of my car, sometimes I get very frustrated and I don't say nice things. But I never say that to the customer or the restaurants or anybody like that. I just keep it inside. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Please stay safe out there. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video and in the comments below. All right, goodbye.